Oh my god, I love her so much. I love her so much. The light is fluctuating. It just really shows, truly, through love all is possible. Oh my god, I just cracked my shoulders. Hello, my greeting friends. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. My name is Melanie, and today I am here with my Crescent City reread reading vlog. That sounded weird, but that's exactly what the video is. In today's video, I read Crescent City House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Maas, and let me tell you, let me break it down for you. I first read this book earlier in the year. I ran to get the ebook because everything was closed back then, and I didn't own it physically. And so I knew that a reread was long over do even though it hasn't been that long since I first read the book because now that I had it physically I really wanted to go back and really tab and annotate the moments that I loved or the moments that I had any notes on and that's exactly the video that y'all are getting today. I've already finished my reread of Crescent City. I actually finished it a few hours ago so y'all will see me cry, y'all will see me laugh, y'all will see me rant about these characters and the story. This is not Sarah J Maas's first book that I have read. As you can see I have a Sarah J Maas shelf and Mr. Pingu is right there, the reappearance of Mr. Pingu, Mr. Pinguinito. However, again, I do not own the entirety of the Throne of Glass series. Hopefully I will one day because I do want to finish my collection. I am currently in the midst of reading this series. But again, this is not my first book that I've read of Sarah J Maas. So you will find out all of my thoughts in the video because I will let past Melanie take it away, letting you know all her thoughts, letting you experience with her as she reads for the second time around House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Maas. If you have yet to subscribe to my channel, don't forget to do so down below for more bookish content. I am constantly uploading videos that I'm sure you do not want to miss and I'm also live streaming throughout the week doing sprints and you can also follow me on all of my social medias which are always linked down below as well as my Amazon wish list. and without a further ado, this intro, I've been recording for six minutes, like this is the intro. I really need to, to learn how to cut it out. If you want to find out all of my thoughts and theories on Crescent City, just keep on watching. <laughs> Hi Molly. Hello. We'd be having all the support. We have Molly. We've got Mr. Bingo. <laughs> all the tabbing stuff. All the annotating stuff. The dust jacket. Look at the crescent moon up close. That's so pretty. <laughs> Okay, so I just hopped off my call with Molly, but whilst I was FaceTiming her, I got to read 20 pages of Crescent City. I have tapped quite a bit for 20 pages. I literally was telling Molly that I have always admired people who tab every single page. I don't possess that talent. And then I followed that up by saying, but watch me do it with Crescent City. And that's exactly what's happening. So it is a great time. And I'm finding it super crazy how hints are being dropped like right from the beginning. And it's hard to catch on to them until later in the story unless it's a reread. I'm not emotionally ready for this book. I don't want to keep going because I know exactly what happens. But you know what? A book hasn't made me cry in a while. So I'm down for some tears. <laughs> I said that weird, choco, choco crispies. Have a great time. It's 2.16 a.m. That scene with Danica when Bryce is going out for the night and she says I love you and she's basically explaining how Danica never says I love you or she never used to and now she is saying it because she never knows when it'll be the last time that they'd see each other. I relate to both of their characters so much in that sense where sometimes saying I love you is so difficult because emotionally you're so closed off and then other times it just being so easy because you're so worried that you're never we're gonna see the person again. I am on 
on page 68 right after the scene happens if you know you know and it doesn't hurt any less rereading it i can't even imagine what it's like to go through something like that i thought i wouldn't cry as hard this time around but i think this time i don't know if last time i cried in this section maybe i was just like shocked but this time around knowing the events of the story i think it's hitting me a little bit harder i'm only like 40 pages out to where i want to be before i go to bed so i'm just gonna keep reading it's it's, it's what's happening okay <laughs> everyone so it's friday the 13th what do you know the more you know i actually have read a little bit of crescent city but i haven't updated you so i'll be doing that later but right now i'm about to jump into one of my live streams my weekly reading sprint and i have crescent city here with me that hopefully i'll be able to make some progress although it's been tabbed so we gotta love it oh no i don't even know what page i'm in i think i'm on like page 200 so hopefully by like the end of the live stream i'll get to like page is page 400 too ambitious maybe Will I still try? Yeah. And here's Molly. You can't hear her because I have, I have my earphones in, but she's there. It is showtime and I'm a little bit late. So let us, let us start the live stream. so many things I've forgotten about Crescent City that I, I've always said I have it so fresh in my mind like it's never leaving but honestly I'd completely forgotten about Rune's group of friends Flint and then Declan I'd completely forgotten about them and every time they're on I just I'm having the best time reading about them as well and seeing like that character dynamic it's been so much fun I'd also forgotten the plot point about Sabine not Sabine um Sandriel and then Shahar I'd completely forgotten about that, but now rereading it makes so much sense as to why Hunt acts the way he acts and obviously the deal that he has with Micah, how that deal is playing out and, and you know, how they crafted that in a way where essentially Hunt is gonna be tied to Micah for the longest time ever. Almost like a, it feels kind of like a revenge thing against, against Hunt to keep him on a leash forever. I love, 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 love Lehava. She is just, I don't know if that's how her name's pronounced, the fire sprite. She is, chef's kiss, incredible. I love her so much. Every time she's on, just like fangirling about Hunt and being like, oh my God, he's so hot. And then the little comment that Bryce made, like you're so tiny, you wouldn't even be able to wrap your hand around his you know what I mean? And so it's just, uh, she's just so funny. And then whenever she's watching like her reality, like her trash reality TV. Oh my God, I love her so much. I am appreciating the dynamic of Hunt and Bryce so, so much in my reread. There's no judgment and he sees her as an equal and the dynamic is just insane, insanely good. And there's this one line, they're kind of like visually communicating in a way. And he's like, I see you, all of you. And I like, like, I like all of you. You can see the dynamic progressing in a way where it makes sense for them to be romantically involved and then Sabine is such oh my god so don't get me started on Sabine because I've been tabbing every moment that Sabine has been in in orange because she makes me mad she makes me mad okay I don't know if I've talked about this before in like my little my little clips my little updates I don't know if in this book series like in Crescent City in the world if mates are a thing because we did get a scene where like Hunt was talking very in depth about Bryce's scent and usually because again Sarah J Maas triggers me with the mates and I love that trope a very distinct thing about mates in any book in any setting is always the scent and when that thing happened and he again described it very in depth i was just over here wondering are mates in this world a thing and if so how does it work and if so could they possibly be mates and so i don't know i'm just questioning it now because i can't remember whether it is or it isn't a thing but i don't know again scents just trigger me in general in like fantasy settings because i'm like Soulmates? Hello? So I may be completely off about that, but those are just some theories for now. Oh my 
god i just cracked my shoulders and that was horrifying but satisfying all at the same time Everyone. I feel like I haven't updated you in forever <laughs> But that's a lie because I have I just finished filming an exciting video which will be going up tomorrow if I'm not mistaken It's gonna be the do I have that book challenge Miss Crescent City is disrespectfully staring at me because I have yet to finish her I don't know if I'll actually read tonight because I do need to edit my video make sure that it's scheduled and everything Because tomorrow a company is coming over to our apartment to clean the ACs and install our kitchen lamp Which is for some reason not working like it's supposed to we'll see what happens though because there's a lot to do and it's 1 49 a.m all right everyone hello today is what day is today wednesday november 18th although it's technically not like the day but it's 12 so it's midnight i am currently on page 600 so i am around 190 something pages out from finishing the book which is totally doable also the character arc that we're seeing from bryce is just absolutely incredible she starts as a party girl or what people would think is a careless party girl who only cares about herself that's truly just a facade and that's what she wants people to perceive and i love that she's just the type of person that goes with that mentality of let people do with their information what they will but i know who i am and that's all that matters and i relate to that so so much however if you've read the book you would know that around page 600 things start getting a little bit crazy there is a big reveal at around i think it's exactly page 608 i may be wrong here's 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 my thoughts the first time i read that scene it felt very anticlimactic and i do feel like that scene is meant to be anticlimactic in many ways because at the end is when everything ties in together and you realize what purpose that scene truly served if you've read the book you know exactly what i mean because it involves hunt and the first time that i read it i felt like it was completely unwarranted i didn't think it made sense with how the story was progressing and then it just happened out of nowhere and rereading it i still Still do feel the same way however I do think that that scene brings forth other important aspects of the story that happen afterwards however the reveal itself as to a conspiracy that was happening I don't like it starting from that scene onwards is where I start feeling a true disconnect with Hunt's character parts of it makes me wonder where Hunt as a character is going because I don't know so although I'm here for the characters, as I've stated before, I am not here for Hunt. And I've, you know, I've talked about this before in my live streams and I've been very vocal about this. Y'all, I literally got to the super interesting part where like the big reveal is happening at the end and I'm starting to doze off. Understandably so, because I am running on one hour of sleep. Currently, I am on page 683. And if I'm being honest, I want to experience this fully i don't want to miss anything so i think i'm just going to finish this in the morning because i am waking up early anyway all right so i am just about to finish crescent city and i am currently on a live stream with sydney for her birthday so let me show you because i'm excited for this live stream it's sydney's birthday today look look at sydney Hi. happy birthday sydney she really said birthday, birthday we love it. We love to see it. And yeah, I'm gonna finish Crescent City here. So if y'all see me cry on live, <laughs> mind your business. <laughs> So, I'm in page 694, 
this is when the summit's happening and serious stuff starts going down with Bryce and I just absolutely love the fact that Bryce being half bay half human still has so much bravery and she's willing to put herself out there despite not having incredible abilities and that says a lot about her and her personality in contrast with the Vanner who are Vanner? Vanier? Vanier. Vanier sounds better to me who are like full-blooded creatures whether they're vampires phase whatever who are not even willing to sacrifice an ounce of their time for the greater good and I just love that Bryce is willing and it breaks my heart too I love Bryce so much and I'm ready to keep crying <laughs> Sydney is so iconic. Look what she's done. <laughs> Sprinting until 45 slash when Mel cries. You know what? I love this for me. Look at her trying to be all innocent, but she's reading Crescent City too, so that's gonna be interesting. Ugh. Okay, so I've just passed the part about the sobbing. As you can see, I'm crying. I love Bryce's and Danica's friendship so much. It just really shows, truly, through love all is possible. And it's so fucking cheesy. It's so cheesy, but it really is. And I just love seeing the dynamic with them and just seeing how the topic of grief developed throughout the story and the process of healing. And it all seemed so realistic when you lose someone that you love so much and and it's just it's so incredible it really is and then hunt again i've i've gone through a roller coaster with hunt i'm like i love him i hate him i love him i hate him okay i need to finish the book i'm only like 10 pages out from finishing i'll be back i'll be back i'll be back Thank you, past Melanie, for all of that info, for all of that emotion. Thank you. I deeply appreciate it that you've gone through the pain for me. I do have a theory before I jump into my actual, like, final thoughts. I mean, I feel like this is what everyone's thinking is going to happen. At the beginning of the book, you have the, I don't know if you guys can see that, but you have the four houses of Midgard. You have House of Earth and Blood, House of Sky and Breath, House of Many Waters, and House of Flame and Shadow. Every single house in Crescent City contains different supernatural or fantastic creatures. I really, my line of thought is going that the next book's titles because I really don't know if this is going to be a series, if it's going to be a trilogy, but I think that the titles of the books will be the titles, the names of the houses in Midgard, and I would honestly love for it to be that because it would allow for more exploration into this world that is so big. So a few thoughts into House of Earth and Blood having finished my reread. The first time I read this book, I gave it a 4.5, and I really do think like back then I had a disconnect with certain aspects of the story that I I wasn't really vibing with and that is primarily and don't hate me for this because I feel like I am in the great minority that do not adore this character and that is Hunt. To this day, even having read the book, I am still not quite sure of Hunt's character motivations. I don't know if he's good, if he's bad, if he wants to rebel against, you know, the government. I still don't know where Hunt stands even though he's the main love interest in the book even though he's been saying like Bryce is it like Bryce is like the like the person I am still not quite sure on that if you've read the book you would understand who this character is if not let me give you let me give you a little bit of context so I do not ship Bryce with Hunt and again I feel like I am in the great minority that don't because the way that this book is set up it's definitely set up in a way that makes you think makes you believe that Bryce and Hunt are endgame I do feel like if there are not a lot of people are going to be mad because that is definitely a big focus of the later third of the book. We don't even get many scenes with this particular character that I really want Bryce to be with. We really just see this character twice <laughs> in the book and that is Adas. He is a prince of hell. I don't know what it is about the vibe that Adas is giving me but I would absolutely adore if Bryce ended up with Adas. There is just something about the way that Adas regards Bryce in the one scene that they interact interact in this book because it's just technically one scene and then a flashback and I may be completely off with this one. I may be absolutely completely off. Beside that one thing, I will say I think I learned how to love Hunt this second time 
reading the book. The first time around, I was just really not quite there for it. I felt like the chemistry was there sometimes and then it wasn't. So it was kind of hard for me the first time around reading this book to really connect with the dynamic and the relationship of Hunt and Bryce. This time around, I do see it a lot more. The way that their dynamic evolved from pure indifference all the way up to I see you as my equal and you are my mirror is just absolutely stunning. And I will say that like, even if I don't know if they're endgame or not, I wouldn't even be mad if they were because I just think the way that their characters have been built, they have been built in a way that they resemble each other a lot in a lot of different aspects. They have both gone through traumatic events throughout their life and they have both gone through great periods of grief and making mistakes and trying to lift themselves back up and not being truly free. So there's a lot of aspects again about their characters that do mirror each other and that in its totality I can really appreciate. And talking about friendships and relationships, I just have to address the elephant in the room which is Danica's and Bryce's friendship. I just absolutely love it. There's just something about reading about friendships in books, but they have to be really, really well-developed friendships that just get to me. And it just makes me cry every single time. The character relationship dynamic that Sarah created for both Bryce and Danica was so beautiful. And that that's just the whole point of the book. The whole point of the book is Bryce and Danica and their relationship. They were so loyal to each other and that love that they held for each other was so unconditional. And it truly, like I, I think I said that in one of my previous clips, but it truly allows you to see in a fictional setting how much love plays into people's behavior and how even if you lose someone, they still live inside of you no matter what because they live in your heart and they live in your memory. And it was so beautifully crafted. I don't think I've ever read any book in which the friendship aspect of it was so well done that that you cared more about the friendship rather than the rome possible possible romance and this book in general despite the dynamics and despite the relationships makes you question absolutely everyone everyone's motivations are questioned throughout the book i mean it's a, it's a chunker it's meant to happen but you never really know when someone's in the wrong when someone's in the right when somebody did something bad when somebody didn't do something bad or when they did something maybe it was good or maybe it's like morally gray and so i love that because it's truly like it gives you whiplash i can't lie but i think at the end, everything ties in so beautifully. And that being said, one of the biggest themes that the book tackles is grief. And I just love the way that it was tackled because it was realistic. When you lose someone, you're not going to be all right right away. And sometimes for some people, it may take weeks. For others, it may take months. For others, it may take years. And I just loved going on this journey with Bryce and seeing her be at that period of deep grief and at the end the way it all wraps up and the way that you know she's gotten to a point where she can forgive herself it's just a stunning journey to go through Connor breaks my heart man it breaks my heart so much that he was so ready for a relationship with Bryce and he was so convinced that Bryce was the person that he wanted to be with whether it was in a relationship or just trying it out and it being the sense of relationship in which you never know until you try and then it not having happened at all it just breaks my heart for these characters that I know would have worked incredibly well together and it just uh it just hit so close to home that when I was reading I was like yeah I was just nodding along to everything and underlining and tabbing I think for Connor at least it was the never knowing part of it and the knowing that again like I know we could work but you're just not giving me a chance in regards to the world building of this book like I said before in my intro I really do think that this is Sarah's most ambitious work to date the world building in this book is so incredibly intricate. There is nothing left unsaid and the things that are left unsaid will surely be wrapped up in one of the following books. But all of the purple tabs mean world building and I have so many of them because I did not want to lose track of exactly how this world works and all of the little details. It's also the book is so atmospheric that you can definitely sense where you are and you can picture all of these places in your head. And I did say this in my fall book 
recommendations video that the blueprint of the city truly lives rent free in my head and just going into the book I knew exactly how everything looked like and I pictured it exactly as I pictured my first time reading and I think that the world building aspect of this book is what makes this book so long because were it not for the world building I feel like this book could definitely be perhaps 200 pages shorter. Going along those lines about the book perhaps being able to be shorter, the book is really long. The book is 799 pages. It definitely has pacing problems. I do not mind them because I like going along with these characters and, you know, hearing the story and picturing everything. So I truly got through the book gladly. Like, give me, like, give me all the pages. But I could see why some people would find this draggy because the beginning is super exciting and then it's like hard hitting and then it's sad. And then when you get more towards the middle part of the book, it definitely starts being more about the character dynamic more than the plot, although there is a sprinkle of plot in there. So you kind of do lose the consistency in regards to pacing. And then at the end, you truly get everything tied up in a way where the part that was dragging makes more sense. Although I do love a very good plot-driven book, I also love character-driven stories. And I feel like this book is definitely the best of both worlds because at the beginning, it's most definitely about the world. It's most definitely about the characters. And then at the end, it's most definitely about the plot. And I do think that this book is one of those books that are meant to be reread. Like you can definitely go into it for a second or third time and keep catching stuff that you didn't catch that first or second time around. And so it has been really lovely to revisit the story and to again notice all those things that when I read them this time around I was like, oh my god, I was so dumb. It's right there. It's been right there this entire book and I did not even see it. So all in all, it's safe to say that this time around instead of giving it a 4.5 I am giving this book a 5 out of 5 star. It is not a perfect book by any means. It does have its flaws. It does have its mistakes and again, despite me not loving certain characters and not loving certain things that happened in the book, I can still see how those make sense. The enjoyment aspect of it elevates whatever I did not particularly like way more to the point where in my brain, a five star is the only rating that I could give this book. For all of us, reading is always such a personal thing. And so whenever I go into books that make me feel a lot of emotion, whether that's anger towards situations and characters that are being talked about in the book. <laughs> Sabine, Autumn King, Micah, I see all of you. I, oh, and Sandriel, I see all of you. Or whether that's sadness because something really tragic happened, or whether that's me loving certain lines because they're so incredibly well written. Emotion for me is a big part into how I rate books beside the logical aspect of it and the analytical side of it. And this book truly is a roller coaster of emotions in my opinion. I'm just here for all of it. I can't wait for book two. Supposedly book two is coming out November 2021. So it's safe to say I'm excited for the next book because again, this does end in a cliffhanger and I want to see how that is going to play out and exactly what it is because it's really vague towards the end. You're just like, okay, that's like giving me nothing. If you have not picked up Crescent City, I definitely recommend that you do. I think I may do a video on Sarah J Moss's reading guide. That way I can give you like my personal opinion opinions and my tips on how to read Sarah's books. If you'd like that, please let me know down below because I'd love to do that for you guys based on my reading experience with these books. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below if you've read the book or even if you haven't, let me know what you think right now after watching the video. Like, are you looking forward to picking it up? Or if you have, let me know all your thoughts down below. And if you reach the end of the video, comment down below some crescent moons. That way I know you reach the end of the video and tagged along with me in this very painful yet exciting ride. Also, don't forget to subscribe down below for more bookish content. I am constantly uploading videos that I'm sure you do not want to miss, as well as I'm live streaming throughout the week doing reading sprints. And you can also follow me on all of my social medias, which are always linked down below, as well as my Amazon wish list. And yeah, I think that's all for today. I love y'all, and I will see you on the next one. Bye, guys.